Welcome to this episode of Parent Quick Smarts, Grade 3, Unit 8, Understand Fractions Conceptually. In this unit of study, students will work with fair sharing and equal parts to develop fractions, name and identify fractions, model fractions in various ways, including with area models, linear models or number lines, and set models. Many children have experience with sharing. Whether it is sharing toys or sharing food, they understand when amounts are fair. Your child will first experience fractional thinking in third grade with sharing activities that force objects to be cut up. In this first problem, there is one object to be divided amongst four children, the pizza. In the second problem, how can Billy share four candy bars with eight people deals with multiple objects. There are not enough candy bars for everyone to have a whole bar. We must cut them up into two pieces. This way, everyone gets half of a candy bar. Your child will also explore the concept that fractional pieces must be divided into equal parts. Let's look at the first scenario. Shanna did cut the pie into six pieces, but can we call those pieces six? Are all the pieces equal? No, they are not equal parts, so we are not dealing with fractional parts here. These pieces are not six. In the second scenario, Jeff cut his brownie into four pieces. Are those pieces equal parts? Can we call them fourths? Yes, these are fourths. The pieces are not the same shape, but if you consider that he first cut the brownie in half, and then he cut each half in half, then each piece must be a fourth. He did cut each half in a different way, but everyone getting a piece will still be eating the same amount of brownie. Half seems like a simple concept, but many people still confuse half with just being two pieces, not two equal pieces. Your child will also learn that fractions have specific names referring to the number of equal parts, and also that fractions can be written in numerical form with a numerator and a denominator. Depending on the number of equal parts we are working with, fractions have specific names. When we divide into two equal parts, these parts are called halves. Three different parts are called thirds. And four different equal parts are called fourths, and so on with fifths, sixths, sevenths, etc. Your child will also learn to write fractions in numerical form. The denominator in this fraction, 5, refers to the number of parts in the whole. The numerator, in this case 2, refers to the number of pieces we are referencing. Your child will use three different models to represent fractions in third grade. Area models represent fractions by showing a region. Linear models represent fractions as values on a number line. And set models represent fractions as groups of objects. It is important your child learn all three models as they may see fractions represented in any of these ways. The area model is one of the more widely used models of fractions. Any shape can be used as the whole, but most often, often circles, rectangles, and squares are used. Rectangles and squares should be encouraged as eventually, with circles, some fractions may be more difficult to use. Many children struggle with making equal parts for thirds, fifths, and for other odd denominators. Rectangles and squares will also be used as strategies for operations with fractions in future grades. 
Your child will also work with fractional amounts greater than one whole. You may remember calling these types of fractions improper fractions. A typical task might include something like this. Each shape shown represents one half of a whole. How many shapes should we put together to make five halves? We know one of these trapezoids is a half, so we can just count out five halves. I already have one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, and five halves. I wonder how many holes we can make with five halves. I see one hole here, and here is another. But then I don't have enough for a third hole. So I was able to make two holes and one half. We can write this as a mixed number. Fractions are values, and just as with whole numbers, can be represented on a number line. Number lines will also be va valuable for allowing your child to see how fractions can be equal to a whole, or even greater than a whole. 5 fifths is equal to one whole, 10 fifths, two holes, 15 fifths, three holes. Some misconceptions children commonly have is in breaking their number line into equal parts, or even by counting by the denominator instead of the numerator. Your child will also have to determine fractional values on a number line without fraction labels. For example, this task asks which arrow points to the same amount as the picture one-fourth. Your child will also use the set model of fractions. This is the only model where all of the parts may not be equal. For example, in talking about a class of students, what fraction are boys? Not every child is exactly the same. But all of the parts we are talking about are children. The set model can also be used to show fractions greater than a whole. Look at these egg cartons. It takes six eggs to fill a whole carton. If I have 20 eggs, how many cartons can I fill? I can fill three whole cartons, and I have two sixths of the last carton. So we represented the fraction 20 sixths, or three wholes and two sixths. Here are some questions that could help deepen your child's conceptual understanding of fractions. How could we share this item with this many people? How do you know this is divided into equal parts? How many thirds, or fourths, or fifths, or six, would it take to make four holes, or three holes, or five holes? What happens to the size of the equal parts as the denominator increases or decreases? In your model, what rep represents the numerator? What represents the denominator? Fractions can be found in many situations in our lives. Using recipes to bake and cook provide experiences with fractions. Measuring, working with tools, woodworking, or even traveling considering the distance, the amount of time, and the gas needed to reach a destination. To continue to work together to support your child in mathematics, please be sure to keep in communication with your child's teacher. You may also utilize the resources available on thinkcentral.com and be sure to visit the district's math webpage. See you next episode.